Amen. I tell you, most times it's not easy to give thanks to God when you are in scenarios you don't really like. But just like I said, we cannot continue doing the same thing over and over and expect a new result. I always do this analysis with my parents. Since I was born, my father had been a prayer warrior, same as my mother. All their life right in my presence. That's why you see pastor's children are the, they are the most billiards. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, pastor's children. It looks as if they are the one that doesn't accept Jesus at all, like most of them. Especially when they are grown. Then they become woke. Especially if they are out of the country. Ooh. You know why that is so? Because everything the father prays about, God will break us through. This is 42 years. We never break through. Is your God sleeping? And right in their presence, they will see their friend's father that is breaking. So they now feel like God is not answering. But God is always answering. Just like we miss some basic parts in heading to victory. But after this morning, guaranteed you will no longer miss any form of victory again Amen. because you would see everything hallelujah Amen. but just like i said you need to first establish your route to victory that's the first thing and the only way by thanksgiving i want you to thank god when you sleep at night you don't even know what happens somebody takes care of you the children you have that they are making you proud somebody's taking care of them in their location every event you set and plan to do the fact that you can do it then god is there fighting battles you think you will just say oh I, I would my next birthday i will do this and you do it you think that's normal no people set dates and they never get to the dates get they scatter just for no reason but god had kept your own I want you to pray. Lord, thank Lord, you thank for you. defeating the for spirits of the, the night. Spirit of the Lord, night. I thank you thank for you. giving me victory over the spirits of the night. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah to your holy name. Glory, glory be to your holy name for delivering me from the spirit of the night. Lord, I say thank you. Lord, I say thank you. In Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying. Lord, for winning and fighting my battles for me, I give you all the glory. I give you all the glory for fighting and winning my battles for me. Lord, I say thank you. Holy Spirit, I say thank you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus, mightiest name, we are praying. Amen. Now let's go to the nitty gritty of it. Hallelujah. For you to expect victory, that means there is a battle. There will be no need for any victory if there was no battle. If everything is going well, you probably don't even need prayers. But we say, we have to pray for something that is working and we have to pray for the one that is not working. But we all know, when I'm praying for something that is working, that's easy. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, you see this Range Rover I'm going out today. Don't let me have accidents. In the name of Jesus. But when your house rent expire and lawyer has given you a letter three times and they say they are coming on Monday, your prayer will be different too. So when you pray to something that needs victory, it's different from when you are maintaining something. To maintain a car is easy. Go and buy one. Then you discover the prices are different. Hallelujah. Amen. So every time that there is a need for victory, there is trouble. That's why. There is a battle you have to win. And now when there is a battle, you cannot lose. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you seeing the difference? You cannot lose because you're already in a battle. So you can't say, I know they fight. They will kill you in that battle. So you have to fight. It's compulsory. You need to deliver your dreams. Your children has to be proud of you. Compulsory. Your wife has to respect you by force. And it's not by fighting or by screaming. By achievement. Your wife needs to playfully call you Odogu. That's what we mean. Your husband needs to tell you you are the best thing that ever happened to him. It's a battle you have to win. Hallelujah. But because we no longer write exams in school, you know, you take your decisions easy. We think it's like that. No, the world is more terrible than what we had when we were in school. And there are nine aspects of life you need victory. Nine. I'm going to just run through it. So that you would identify. This is the nine aspect that covers human life. If you fail in one, it's not good enough. You need victory across the nine. Hallelujah. The number one is spirituality. That's why the Bible was clear. You don't go and envy people that are unbelievers. No matter what they have in victory, it's still a waste of time. Because heaven is not guaranteed. So spirituality, when you believe in Jesus, the resurrection of Christ, the word of God, that is an aspect you have to be successful on. But that is one aspect of life. Unfortunately, and I use the word unfortunately, everybody that is a Christian, even those Muslims and everybody that believes in something, all of a sudden, that is the only thing that matters in their life. You think God created you here to be dumb? No. 
God created us here to live life. There is a purpose for you to breathe. But all of a sudden, we are all going back to heaven. Then we disdain whatever happens in the world. You know the error? Whatever you do or don't do in the world is what you'll be judged with when you get back to heaven. So the fact that you think, I'm just going to heaven, I'm a Christian. And then you don't do what God sent you here. You are going to be punished for that. So we are already in battle. You need to deliver what God sent you to do in this world. And you have to do it consciously and correctly and to be able to get back to heaven. You now see spirituality is more than what you think. You accept Jesus. I don't say somebody else should spoil. I'm just doing my own gently. No, 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 no. It's not gently. You have to deliver what he told you to do. The parable of the talent was clear. If I give you a talent, you have to multiply that. If you don't, I'm going to send you away. And you know what it means. That means there is no heaven. Because if he sends you away and collects what he has given to you, who is he sending you to? When God sent you away, where, where is he sending you to? Hallelujah. Everybody got sent away. Nothing came back good out of them. Cain was sent away. Devil was sent away. There's nothing. If God sent you away to where? So if he says, I'm going to collect my talent back and send you away, that's enough trouble. And you don't want that to happen. So if you are a Christian, your spirituality matters. And that's just one aspect. Number two, your physical aspect. Your size. Your look. Your fashion sense. It's not worth nothing. Let me just tell you how important this is. Let's say Jesus wants to appear to you tomorrow. And Jesus appears as a dwarf. And then comes to you and say, Hello, my son. I am Jesus. What will be your first response? You're probably going to say, No, this is not a good indication. You know why? Once Jesus appears, you want something big, something nice, something powerful. Even in movies, when it's time for God to speak, even in movies, Oh, that was child of God. They'll put and thunder everywhere. But you, when you appear, you are appearing like a chicken. Your physical appearance is nothing to write to me about. And you say, I'm a Christian. It's moderate. This one is not moderate. It's rubbish. Hallelujah. Amen. Physically, you have to resemble it. If you serve the living God, resemble it. And what do we say? Basic things, appearance, basic exercises. And this thing affects us. We don't know. Marriage now. No attraction between husband and wife. It's because of the size. Every consultant, everybody will tell you this size is not, it's not giving. But you are not doing anything about it. It's a part of life you have to excel and have victory over. How about finances? I'm trying my best. No, your best needs to deliver. That's how to try one's best. Once your best is not delivering, you have not been victorious about your finance. And that's why we're here. You need to be victorious about the nine aspect of life. So either it is making money or keeping money or growing money or passing money to the next generation or investing money, you need to have victory over that. Is the third aspect. The fourth one is socially. A lot of Christians don't have social life. So when they are in crisis, not one single person can they call to help. It's not normal. You have to socialize. When God wanted to create human being, he said, let us all come together and gather. He had people, even when he was the almighty, he had people he socializes with. And the Bible even said it. In the dark of the evening, dawn of the evening, everybody gathered to play with him. He has a social life. But you, oh my friends, they are, they are going to hell. You created hell. How do you know who's going to hell? Hallelujah. Your job is to preach to them but you can have a social life. There's not everybody that is an unbeliever. Unless something is wrong with you, you think you're the only one that is holy. Hallelujah. Social life, community building. You have money now, but the, your street, the street you live on, is portal full everywhere. And you can afford to fix it. Fix it. Hallelujah. Amen. It, it has nothing to do with anything. Fix it. It's part of life that you have to get victory over. How about family? That's another part of life. Your ability to parent easily. Some people are bad parents. They are good wives, but they are horrible parents. Some people are good husbands, but oh, horrible fathers. You need to be able to do that. How about caring? You have to be able to care for others. It's part of something you need victory over. It's a part of life. Then we have the intellectual. That is what they call mentality. It has to be victorious. Everybody becomes what they think, whether you like it or not. So when your thinking is not straight or is not proper or is not the best, your life is not proper, your life is not the best, your life is not straight. And it's as simple as that. And if you think, I don't know what I'm saying, your life is equal, directly equal to what you think. Why are you in Nigeria? Because you thought you want to be in Nigeria. You say, no, I have already thought about it. I want to leave Nigeria. Then leave now. If you can't, 
then you need victory over what you think. So education is part of this. Mental strength, all of these self-help things, they are under intellectuals and you need victory over that. Because once you give up, then that's the end. Just because your intellect cannot carry it. Hallelujah. 